Okay, well, so I can answer that question. So the question is, what is the relationship between people who participated in the Boston Tea Party and people who became members of the Society of the Cincinnati? Because we think of the members of the Society of the Cincinnati as being older, more established Federalists, uh, whereas we think of the Boston Tea Party types as being, you know, rowdy young, uh, young men and, uh, um, you know, more, more local. Oh, okay, sorry. Okay. 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 Well, I mean, one answer is is that obviously the the, the society of the Cincinnati is planned out a lot better by so, th yes, they're still young men by the end of the war, but they've they've seen a lot and they've they've matured, you know, um, uh, and uh, uh, whereas the Tea Party is somewhat more spontaneous. And even though they were, you know, picking a bunch of kind of uh, local guys that they could count on uh, on December 16th, 1773, um, I don't think they would have done what they did if they didn't have a broader perspective about uh, this peer pressure from New York City and Philadelphia and the, the, uh, some worries about the relationship between the colonies and the British Empire. So I think that the guys who participated in the Boston Tea Party did have that broader perspective. Now, these individual guys end up with different fates. Some of them uh, maybe become private soldiers or die during the war and, you know, and kind of sink into obscurity, but some of them make good and they rise through the ranks of you know, an artillery company and by the end of the war they've, they're very high ranking and would have been the types of guys who would have been uh, original members of the Society of the Cincinnati. So not everyone is going to become Ebenezer Stevens uh, you know, uh, and, have, you know, and, and, and have the house that's then going to inspire Edith Wharton's house in Massachusetts because she was his descendant. Um, so not, not everyone is going to have that kind of career, right? The, most of the guys who participated in the Boston Tea Party were you know, young men, maybe politically active, but coming, you know, most of them were craftsmen, you know, kind of, of, of that rank. Now, the, the interesting thing about 18th century America is you weren't necessarily consigned to only being in a certain class for your whole life. You know, you could find various ways to make it in America, but not everyone, right? And so you see that in the fates of these various Tea Party guys. Some of them wind up like Noel, begging the federal government for, for money in their, in their 80s, um, and others are gonna be charter members of the, of the society. So, you know, that, but that's, that's always been the case in America, I think. So I, I think you can see some of those careers being exactly parallel, but obviously you can't, in any group of 100 guys or with the charter members of the society, many hundreds of guys, you're never gonna find perfect commonality among them, I guess. Um, so, but that's a very interesting question uh, and something that's, I don't know, yeah, kind of worth exploration in its own right. I, I, I came up with a list at some point in my research of who were all of the members of the Tea Party from my list that were original members of the society, and I, but I didn't have those notes in front of me when I uh, did this talk, so I reconstructed it as best as I could and I think I didn't forget anyone.